Hey there, this video is all about the low light or high ISO performance of the Nikon ZF. And before I get into it, just have to have a huge thank you to BH Photo who lent me this camera to test review and make videos like this for all of you. There are links in the description for the ZF and all the gear that I use on a regular basis. So go check out BH if you're looking to pick anything up. And thanks again for making this video possible. All right, I will be comparing the Nikon ZF with the Canon R5C, which is really not known for being an extremely good low light camera, but it does really well in that middle ISO range. And also it's just the camera that I have to compare this camera against. So I will be comparing the R5C. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about when it comes to high ISO performance is noise reduction, because a lot of these mirrorless cameras have noise reduction in the built into the camera that you can't change. Now with the Nikon ZF, you cannot change the noise reduction. It is built into the camera. In the Nikon ZF, I will of course be recording in the best possible quality, which is the H.265 10-bit, and I will be shooting in N-Log. But if I scroll down here to where you can change the noise reduction, it is grayed out, high ISO noise reduction. And when you click on it, it says this option is not available at the current settings or in the current state. So there's definitely noise reduction that's being baked in and we can't control it, which is pretty common for a lot of mirrorless cameras. Let me talk about the R5C. So in the Canon R5C, I will be shooting in the 4K XF AVC. And if I go into the Canon Log 3 settings, I have them set to the default, but you can actually come in here and change the noise reduction. But what I have it is set to auto because I think that'll be the best way to compare these two cameras. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is the dual base ISO of the Nikon ZF. And I don't think a lot of people know this. I don't think it's really advertised in a lot of places, but I've been talking with one of the engineers at Nikon to get a little bit more information about some of these cameras so I can share that with all of you. And he said that the Nikon ZF actually has a dual base ISO of 800 and 6400 when shooting an N-Log. And we will confirm this when we look at the ISO tests. So for these two tests on the cameras, we'll be shooting in N-Log in the H.265, like I talked about, and C-Log 3 in the 4K XFAVC. Now to set the proper exposure in the Nikon ZF in N-Log, you wanna make sure you set up your zebras properly to get proper exposure on a gray card. So coming in here, we can go to our zebras and we're gonna set the pattern tone range to mid-tones. And then we wanna set our mid-tone range to 95 plus or minus five. I know this is kind of weird, but it's actually a scale from zero to 255. So this is what you wanna set your zebras to to get the gray card exposed properly in N-Log. And of course in the R5C, I just use false color on a gray card. After getting proper exposure in the cameras, I will just raise the ISO while increasing the shutter speed to keep proper exposure. I use the same lens on both cameras, my trusty Sigma Art EF 28 millimeter lens. And for grading, I used a color space transform in Resolve and then graded the log image by hand to just add some contrast and saturation to match. I didn't adjust the colors whatsoever. Taking a look at both cameras here, starting at the base ISO of 800. I think in the lower ISO range, both cameras are pretty clean. They both have an oversampled image. And going up through the range here, you'll start to see that as the noise increases, you'll see a little bit more blockier, more smeary looking image in the ZF. And I think that a lot of that has to do with the noise reduction in the cameras. Now, the R5C has a dual base here at 3200, so you'll see it clear up there. Now in this middle ISO range here, I definitely think the R5C is cleaner as we come up to the second base ISO of the ZF happening at 6400. So take a look here, it hits the second base ISO. It cleans up a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a huge cleaning up, but there is a little bit of a cleaning up going up at 6400. In this higher ISO range here up to 10,000, I give an advantage to the R5C. Once we start looking at 12,800 and up, I think they start to look a little bit more similar in terms of luminoise. I think there is more chroma noise in the ZF. And it's a really easy to be critical about that zoomed in 400% look. But if you look at the actual image, I think both of these cameras do decently well in the higher ISO range. So the next thing I wanna take a look at here is the ZF's full frame mode versus its crop mode. So on the left, we have the FX or full frame mode, which is oversampled from the full width, the 6K resolution oversampled to 4K. And on the right, we have the Super 35 or APS-C crop. It's about a 1.5 times crop. And what it does is it crops it on the sensor and it's not oversampled. So generally speaking, when you're using a smaller sensor with everything else staying exactly the same, you are going to get more noise on the crop mode. And you can definitely see that here throughout the ISO range that it's definitely cleaner on the full frame mode. So here we are at 5,000. Let's take a look at when it hits the second base ISO of 6,400. You can see that both clean up, just verifying the second base ISO of this camera. The other thing when you are doing an oversampled image versus a not oversampled image is it compresses the noise and you get a cleaner image. So you can definitely see throughout this range, uh, throughout all, this, all these ISOs that the full frame mode looks cleaner. But I think that the crop mode does clean up pretty good. You also see 
see a difference in sharpness if you look at the zoomed in part at the bottom of the 400% because of course we have the oversampled mode versus the crop mode. Overall, I think the Nikon ZF does perform pretty well in terms of its low light or high ISO performance. Having that second base ISO of 6400 definitely helps on that middle high ISO range. So 6400, 8000, you get it to clean up quite a bit there. So keep that in mind when you're setting your exposure. Now, personally, I prefer a second base ISO to be around 3200 or 4000. That's a little bit more usable for me. Uh, I'm not shooting in super dark situations all the time where you might wanna use like an FX3 at 12,800. But I think for most situations, I, I was pretty impressed with the high ISO performance of the ZF. Now here's a shot just of me in my studio here with just using a candle, so very low light. This was shot at F2.5 and ISO 12,800. And overall, I think just the ZF does pretty well. I think it's a little bit surprising to me how well this camera did. I didn't expect it to even have a second base ISO, so I'm glad I reached out to Nikon. Anyways, hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please hit subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next one.